One of my high school teachers gave me one of the most valuable pieces of advice that I'd ever heard in my entire life. Um, he told me that if anybody says something that immediately makes you feel upset and angry, he said to question why it is that someone else's vocalized opinion makes you so angry and upset that you're not able to keep your composure and learn from what they're trying to tell you. A lot of people will have an individual conflict with themselves. They want to find the truth, but they also want to be right. And unless if you're some magic one in a million special butterfly type of individual, odds are that you will be wrong sometimes. This is not an easy thing to accept. In fact, most people likely fear very deeply that they might be wrong, which is why they will go to every length to prove themselves and discredit other contrary opinions. And in extreme cases, they may even block it out entirely. At our very core, blindly fueling this conflict, and many others, is the ego. Acknowledging and understanding our ego is crucial, not just in the realm of open-mindedness and truth-seeking, but in every other aspect of life. For all of you guys who are still here and haven't clicked off the video, thank you. I appreciate your support. But also, um, if you're willing to entertain this idea, that you might just be wrong. You've already won half the battle to discovering and figuring out what the ego is. The ego is the content for your consciousness. It's all the information, memories, and beliefs that are stored in your brain that make up you as a person. It is what guides the internal thought processes in your mind that many people may refer to as the internal narrator. Without the ego, there would be simple consciousness. The closest examples to this is young children, deep meditative states, and some psychoactive states of awareness. To experience this would mean to simply experience the world as an observer without any sense of judgment, identity, or any orientation in thought. Obviously, the ego is important in day-to-day -day life, but it is important to understand that the ego is not the self. An ego without consciousness would be robotic. It is important to first understand what the ego is so that it can be a serving part of the self. A lot of us have this perspective that we have a great deal of experience using to interpret the world around us. We see it as this foreign, and alien place that we have to find our way in and try to understand and find our place in. And I believe that there is a better approach to seeing the world. Instead of seeing the world as this expanse around and about you, try seeing the world as simply an expansion of you. With this perspective, it's harder to be hateful or fearful about things that you can't control. It makes it easier to feel like you truly do belong here and that you couldn't belong better anywhere else. It makes it easier to view the world with less bias and less judgment. So. Is the ego bad then? Should we try to destroy our egos and hopes of pursuing just true and pure consciousness? Say you decide to let go of the ego and treat the ego as a bad thing that you must eliminate from your life. You actively try to suppress and ignore your ego and it diminishes more and more. But what you don't realize is that you've still been egotistical the whole time. Why did you decide to kill your ego in the first place? Wasn't that in itself a judgment and decision made from the ego? Sure, say someone actively suppresses their ego to nothingness, it still doesn't matter because they will still be acting off of the core drive to escape their ego, which becomes their new core egotistical identity. On the other hand, if you ignore your ego, 
then you are choosing to turn a blind eye to the very thing that drives every thought, belief, and ultimately every action that you take in your life. Most people have already been doing this their entire lives, so choosing to take this course of action is understandable. Another course of action is to allow yourself to simply be aware of the ego. You don't necessarily have to suppress, change, or ignore your ego. You can become conscious of it. Paying attention to how it guides and affects you in your day-to-day -day life. But most importantly, you can determine if your ego is serving you or if you are serving it. If you're coming to this video because you want me to tell you what to do about your ego, or maybe you found this video and you suddenly have discovered a new way of seeing yourself under this concept called the ego. The only advice and the only thing I can really tell you is to do what you want to do.